Hello, everyone. So we're going to get started uh, today. Uh, so my name is Mehdi Slawi-Andalusi. I'm a part of the customer success team for Power Apps. Uh, so what we get to do is see uh, all of the fun apps and all of the amazing stuff our customers are doing on a daily basis, uh, building apps uh, for many, for many scenarios in their enterprise. So part of what we learn really, uh, today's talk is actually inspired from some of the learnings and uh, Things that we we observed as 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 we were as we as we were looking at their uh, at their apps and uh, the way they they are actually using the 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 platform, so uh, so it assumes that you are familiar with Power Apps, that you know the language and that uh, you have been building apps for a while. Uh, so this talk is really about how to kind of get the last mile optimization from your apps. So hopefully you guys are all familiar with Power Apps. Clicker. So I'm going to start with a simple example. Today's demo, uh, what I'm going to show really is, uh, is ha what happens behind the scene when you bind your UI to data when, when you are working with Power Apps. Uh, so the typical scenario is you will have a gallery control or some sort of UI really bound to a, to a table. In our case here, I have a simple relationship uh, between a project and, uh, and an owner. Uh, so every project in uh, in here has an owner, so we have a lookup relationship that we'll have to implement to render this uh, this UI. I'm mean, gonna switch the to my uh, studio here. And show really how what's that? Sorry. Yeah. All right, so this is the studio. Uh, you must be familiar with it, uh, I presume. So as you can see, I have a, a regular gallery control uh, bound to a, to a table, uh, project table. So it has priority names. It's a very simple scenario of uh, displaying project items. And uh, for every project, you have an owner right here. Uh, and. Uh, Again, if you're familiar with the Power Apps, you'll uh, recognize this formula here. You have a straight lookup to an owner table in order to fetch the name. So very straightforward uh, operation. Uh, but behind the scene, uh, there's a lot of uh, things happening in order to make this happen. So I want to show the app just uh, in, uh, in real time. And I want to display actually the HTTP trace so that we see what's going on when we make the request from Power Apps. So I'm going to refresh this page. And it's loading. We have a slow connection here, but we'll see here the HTTP traces uh, of Power Apps. Make sure we are staying here. And you notice how how the how the the project got rendered, and you see that there is a little bit of delay for the names to 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 appear, so uh, project owner names to to show up. And it takes a little bit of a little bit of time, but you can see clearly here that that uh, we did load the, the, our, uh, our collections, we loaded the project table, and then we pro loaded the owner for each one of the projects. So typically what users do is, is, is this, so they, they bind the, the project as we saw, and uh, behind the scene we see that Power Apps actually made a call to the project table right here, and it fetched the first 100 items, uh, and, then, and then it started calling, every, for every single item that we see in that gallery, it started calling uh, the owner table, so it's another query. So you can see here we had about 16 calls. We downloaded about 23,000 bytes, uh, and it took a little bit, uh, a little bit. Well, it took a while for this. In this particular case, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, so it's quite a bit, and we're going to contrast this to another way of, of approaching uh, data loading for Power Apps. So I'm going to switch back here. And I'm going to switch back to my presentation real quick. So rather than, than, uh, than loading uh, everything uh, the way we did before by binding directly to a gallery, what I'm doing here is I'm actually binding, I'm, I'm actually uh, 
downloading the project table into a local collection, and I'm doing that for the owner table. So basically, I'm doing local caching, uh, and there is a gotcha here. There is a cap to, to how many items you can download. But at the very least, if you know that you are going to be downloading a, a, a very a small amount of data, 2,000 items or less, this way of doing things might end up being a better approach. So I'm going to show real quick uh, how it works. So I have here basically the two statements that are allowing me to fetch data from, uh, from my project database and from the owner table. Notice that I also have the opportunity to toggle the visibility of a loader. Uh, this is just to improve the experience. And uh, I'm going to refresh uh, uh, my, my app here. This is the, uh, the updated version of the app that's using this. Uh, notice that I am actually doing, a, I'm doing a, a loader experience, which is always a nice thing from a user's perspective, uh, versus the other way of doing it, which uh, you know, lets the user not really be aware of what's going on until the, until the data loaded. The other thing that you notice is that the, everything appeared at once. So that also ends up being a much better user experience. So I'm going to just uh, go back to uh, Fiddler here and, uh, and show the, the difference between the two approaches. So as you can see, we had only two, uh, two items that are uh, two basically network calls. As you notice, we actually fetched 500 items versus 100 items that the gallery, uh, uh, the previous example showed. So if I, uh, if, if I actually show the, the network call here, it took about two seconds to, uh, uh, to render. So the network here is not very consistent. So typically what we see is that this method is actually about a second and a half faster to cache your data versus actually making those uh, regular those network calls to the owner table. Uh, and the reason the reason that's uh, that's happening is uh, is because uh, uh, the reason that's happening is because like for every single call we have this overhead, uh, and when we have multiple calls we have uh, an overhead. Uh, in returning the data for every single item. So rather than doing that, we can see here that we have only two calls uh, that were performed, and it was a, a much faster experience. The other thing is that we had the opportunity to, uh, to show the loader experience. And again, this always translates to a better user experience. So often, uh, when we go and optimize some apps, we, we, we look at ways for us to kind of uh, filter the data down so that's a reasonable amount. Uh, and we you typically try uh, our best to, uh, to load it up front, uh, and then, and then uh, that would give us, that give us usually the opportunity to show a, a loading experience. Uh, I'm going to switch back to, uh, to another example here. So the, the same example I gave earlier where we were actually loading data from server, but another optimization that you could consider for your app is caching your data locally. So that helps usually, so basically storing data in your devices. Uh, so that helps usually with that second time experience when the user comes back to, uh, to the app and then they have their data ready to go. So what I'm showing here uh, is, uh, is uh, basically, uh, I'm, I'm trying to load data from my device. I might or might not find that data. Uh, say we don't find the data, we do the regular loading experience, which is basically fetching data from servers. Uh, in our case here, we're using SQL, but everything I'm saying here is, uh, is basically applicable to data sources like SharePoint or, or CDS. So we're fetching data from servers, we're storing it locally right here, uh, and then we are proceeding to saving the data locally for the next iteration, so for the next user that comes, for, the, for that same user coming back to the app. Uh, so Second time the user comes, they're going to find data uh, in projects and owner because we're loading that right here. And, uh, and then the UI will be, re will be refreshed right away. There is no, so you will see an instantaneous loading of the, uh, of the data at that point because we have the data in, a, in, your, uh, in your own local devices. So this ends up being a, a much better uh, experience. If, and sometimes you might have an offline scenario that goes hand in hand with this. So if you are implementing offline scenario for your app, you could take advantage uh, 
of that feature to improve even your user percep perception of, of how the app is performing. So the next thing here is a concurrent call. So we have seen a lot of those real world situation where uh, uh, customers and uh, trying to kind of uh, squeeze in the most uh, out of the platform. Uh, today, the platform doesn't allow you to do really truly concurrent calls. And one way to do that today is to use timers. Uh, I don't usually recommend doing this just because it becomes harder to maintain. Uh, but it does help uh, in case you need to make a parallel calls for your APIs. Uh, the team is uh, the, the product team is working on a on a function that's gonna s look something similar to this. So it's coming, it's gonna come soon. But it will basically allow you to make a concurrent call for your APIs, or for your data sources. So running parallel is coming soon. For, but for now, what we see here is that I'm I'm setting up timer one and two. Each one of them will trigger at a certain uh, point, uh, making an API call, and the data might come back uh, at different time. And that's why you have a final timer that keeps checking whether the data is, is back. So there are some features that are out of the box uh, that you can see in the experimental feature. Uh, delayed load is one that I suggest uh, turning on. Uh, if you uh, right, uh, currently, when this is turned off, Power Apps will evaluate every single expression that you have throughout your screens. Uh, so one idea here is to uh, is to, uh, to turn on this flag, which basically m will tell Power Apps to only execute functions uh, and expressions that are on the home screen or the first screen that you are in. Uh, anything else will be executed at the time where you get to the page. So often what we see is that uh, people will have bindings uh, all over the app to actual data sources, and they all get called uh, as soon as the app gets started. So this allows you to delay that. Uh, there is also another feature, experimental feature called explicit column selection that can help boost your performance. It only works for SQL right now, but uh, the idea there is that you will only, uh, so Power Apps will do some reflection and uh, kind of iterate through your app and understand which columns are actually being used in your app. So in the situation where you have a, you know, a database with multiple columns, but you're not really using some of those uh, data in uh, sorting those columns, uh, the only data that's going to be coming back from the database, from the source here, uh, data source, is really the data that's going to be used for power, with Power Apps. So ex explicit column selection is the one I'm talking about right now. Uh, well, before I actually uh, go to the next screen, uh, the last, uh, the last time item here is, uh, you can see here, you can... Uh, you can set a max number uh, today by default when we fetched our, uh, our uh, data from the server using the clear collect method. We, uh, we, uh, you notice that it actually gave us only the five first handed items. Uh, the, and um, and that, that sometimes might not be the ideal situation. You might want to increase that to 2,000 items if you are in, in that range. Uh, clear collect has that maximum. The query that you're going to be calling is going to have f up to 2,000 items. Uh, and uh, so if you find yourself like 500 is you really have a database with have a bit more than 500 items, you might want to increase this value. Uh, and the max there is 2,000. So another thing that we see often is uh, formulas. Uh, here is a simple example. Uh, it's something that uh, someone needs to review as, as they are going uh, on their final review for the apps. So we see often things like a filter operation with a profile being pulled or an API call right here. And each time someone do a sort or a search, uh, the Office 365 API in this example will actually be triggered. So there is a lot that can be done just from looking at, 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 the, at your uh, formulas and filters and uh, sort operations uh, in order to optimize. In this particular example, the the alternative is to simply uh, encapsulate that call into a current user email. So you would be calling this, uh, this particular function uh, maybe on your own visible of that page or on your own start. Uh, you know that your profile is not going to change during this session or unlikely to, to change. Uh, so you, you save that value into a variable, and then you can go ahead and do your, your formula here. Uh, but those, what I'm showing here is something we see often, and it ends up actually uh, really impacting performance of your, uh, of your apps. Another example, uh, it's a simple example again. 
Um, we have, uh, we, I've seen this uh, many times. You, you have a first and a filter. A filter operation will always go and get a bunch of data. So it's a, it's a collection of data that comes out of a filter. Uh, so you will have some sort of condition. People will do filter project and then and then they would get all of that collection from the database or from the, from the data source, and then they would take only the first item. Uh, and typically, it's always, always better to do a lookup operation in this particular case, just because you're gonna get one, one item. Uh, I'm often surprised how often I see that first statement, and, and in fact, a simple, a simple change uh, can make a big difference as well here. So formulas, it's something that also can impact uh, uh, your performance and it's something to take into account when you uh, when you when you're working with uh, with Power Apps formulas there. So uh, file optimization is a given. So we all did the HTML uh, development. Uh, people uh, uh, tend to forget to compress images. That's something I do myself. Uh, I uh, I uh, it's uh, always a good thing to compress your asset, whether it's uh, videos or images. Uh, if you know that you're not going to use transparency, use JPEG. Uh, put your images in a CDN. That way you make use of uh, all of the geolocation stuff so that actually the, the data gets loaded quickly for the user. There is some opportunities for you to also preload assets within your app. Uh, you could use a gallery control in a transparency mode uh, in order to force trigger all of the images calls to your, to your images. So you force the network call, uh, and then what's happened is that those images will start getting downloaded on the background. Uh, and then by the time someone gets to a page or a screen where the image is needed, uh, then it's then it's going to be available for them. So preloading asset is always also a, a a good thing to to take into account here. Uh, today, that's another thing that people uh, need to be aware of, and it's documented in our documentation, but it's sometimes over, or overlooked. If you're doing a massively, uh, if you're going to scale your application to a thousand and thousands of users, know that there is a throttling that's happening. Uh, in our connectors, we have uh, today we support up to 600 requests per minute uh, per user. Uh, that that gives you plenty, but it's it is a limit that someone needs to build uh, their app uh, and keep that in mind. And you can do up to 30 concurrent users, uh, uh, 30 concurrent calls per user. So. And uh, finally, controls. Uh, this is something that's going to impact more your app maker experience. The more control you're going to have in your studio, uh, the heavier your, your, uh, your app is going to be. And there is often ways for you to find uh, better approaches or, uh, or, uh, or uh, more economical approaches in, in order to minimize the number of controls that you have in a page. An example here is just the use of gallery control rather than the canvas control. Uh, in order to display uh, 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 something similar to this where uh, typical, typically you would want uh, maybe a data control, a canvas control with data cards in them, uh, but in reality you could drive a gallery control to show or hide element depending on, on the schema that you, you define yourself. Uh, the end result is that you have a template that has about maybe six controls uh, versus a canvas control that could have had uh, that same numbers of controls times the number of uh, cards that you might have. So you could go from six controls on your screen to about 40, 50 controls if you have just five, six cards. So using like approaches like that will minimize the number of controls in your screen. So at runtime, uh, you will have DOM, uh, like it will be, a, it will be a basically it's HTML at the end of the day, so it will have less uh, DOM elements to render on the screen. So I think that's, uh, that's about it. Thank you. I'm two minutes short, so if uh, someone have a question, anything, happy to. Thank you.